being able to present that the right way is going to be the hardest thing to do. If you catch it on film. Uh, the, la it. the last season, we actually got to be able to, you know, with one with the drone, uh, we got to see it from the air. And uh, we go through that footage. When they send that back to LA to post, and they observe that very, very closely. Because it's so. That Piper Cup, and circle and move and circle and move. And that is probably the closest that I feel we've been to the government, except for maybe if the road team's associated with them, and I've found them in the thermal camera in the woods where they've been on top of us. And they've never identified themselves as government, so we have to answer that as they were. Yeah, that plane, it probably wasn't, what, 500 foot off the ground. A lot of times, them airplanes fly around in the daytime, and because they're out there, you know, looking. But at 1.32 o'clock in the morning, this plane non-stop circling us the entire night. And uh, first one to be at the, in the middle of the dark, and, and it never stopped going around us. So they know that there was something in that area. And, uh, and then when Jeff under, you know, first found that foot track, uh, it wasn't something that you would just go up and see in the dirt. Uh, I believe that, you know, he was looking up underneath the, for where there were some ground moles or some chipmunks in there making it. And, and he uncovered the leaves which revealed that footprint. So that, that track alone was the most definite, you know, uh, footprint that we ever caught, you know, or ever seen out there. And for him to find it was uh, off, you know, way off scale. Uh, it wasn't out in the open. It was, you know, it wasn't you know, easy to find. It was just so happened that he knew some leaves back and got very lucky to see it. When well, Jeff broke out that footprint, they shut this, we was filming, they shut the production down, tell them we made a cast for that. Jeff broke the top of it. We don't want to forget the hairs on the tree. Huckleberry, Huckleberry came over from the other ridge and he said, did anybody look on the tree for hairs? Well, that big foot had, had a right arm around the tree, shoved his left foot down there. The best footprint I've ever seen. And there was hairs right on the tree. When we get two, three of them, still got them. Pretty amazing. You got to think about that. See a footprint in a tree. And then when you start analyzing it, it was this most simple, simple tree structure I'd ever seen. So you look at the trees that he crossed and laid in right where he was hanging out, they didn't even belong there. So all of a sudden you're looking at something that he really did on his end. Nice footprint, 18 some inches long. Then that fall, I put out a few feeders and uh, there they were. They were going through the snow, an infinity of footprints. And I put out leaders, you know, asking people what's going on. So the next person comes and says, hey, they're down by the dam. They're breaking shad, eating those out of the top of the ice, and then there's footprints, and they got a juvenile. And the, the mother was down teaching the juvenile how to fish in the top of the ice, and the footprints just walked off. It, 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 it was a great find. It gave you cold chills when you're there, and you see one footprint that leads to a family, and that is the ultimate find in Bigfoot is the family because they do exist and they teach each other. I don't know, does everybody know here that the juvenile uh, actually rides on the mom for six years? And then she teaches them everything they can know how to walk upright rather than crawling like a bear. And at that point in time, she starts teaching them everything they know about nature and the, the father big foot takes over from there. That was awesome fun at the Got any more questions? First off, Jeff, we're sorry to hear about your wife. So, um, second of all, what part of West Virginia are you guys actually from? I live in Morton. And I live uh, 20 miles north of uh, Huckleberry and uh, just a couple miles from Trafford where Trafford used to live in Pleasant County. I live right in the what, the Ohio border there, Washington County, about 45 minutes from Willie, 45 from Huckleberry, and about 
And then it depends on what day of the week how far I am from Bill. He's got different person who lays his hat out at night. Some days he's closer and some days he's farther away. And We still don't know where Bill is. What was that? He is the crazier one of the bunch. You hey, said I that. Prove that too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no joke, brother. You got any more questions? <laughs> Uh, if they were going to send you to a foreign country to investigate any foreign monsters, what specific ones would each of you want to see? <laughs> I've not been off the eastern coast of the United States yet. So I wouldn't know what foreign country I'd even want to go to. I love America, and I love it. Hoorah! <laughs> so to get me out of this country to go to another country and hunt anything, I have no desire yet. Um, I still like to be able to you know, cover the 50 states I live in. And uh, so as far as uh, west I've ever been from the eastern coast, I uh, have been to the Indiana border on the state of Ohio. And I stopped at this place on what they call the State Line Road, and I peed in the Indiana State. <laughs> uh, so the part of me has been any farther uh, less than that. Good <laughs> All right, who's got another question? We've got time for about two more. Two more. I need four hands. Hands are somewhere. I think that guy over there in the, in the chair, I think he had a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he didn't. Might be called a mosquito. We got one to pray. Alright, I'll ask one more. Um, scientists will always want to know why haven't why hasn't anyone found Bigfoot remains or Bigfoot skeleton? Because it don't take want something very long to deteriorate in the wood and the bones get carried off, the leaves cover them up. Mice chew them up. Yeah, mice will chew them up. Do you, do you go out in the woods much? Okay, well, I'll give you this. You see a lot of deer when you're traveling? We're out in the woods a lot. We see very few deer stalls, antler drops. Those things are just gone in a matter of time. The bugs eat them. And we seem to think that maybe the Bigfoot bury their own after the midnight whistler. And then we see them like maybe they're like an elephant. They go off to a place where they all know they go die. Because we found some travel spots in the woods where they were leaving their mark. They was on that big wheel out, out in that cornfield where the tree was upside down. Well, they came through and they'd lay a rock in the direction they went so each big foot would know which way they went. So I, I believe they bury themselves. They bury their own. They bury their own. Also, I believe in the mammoth caves down in Kentucky, uh, they found three you know, huge uh, skeletons that was way back when. And now uh, it's still undetermined whether that was uh, three Bigfoot or was that three great big Vikings. You know, but uh, they believe that giants at one time roamed the earth, that we don't find very many skeletons of them. So it's still, you know, determined whether that, you know, the mammoth caves was, you know, Bigfoot or was they actually, you know, huge Vikings that they found. So it's hard to tell. I know that they would, you know, from the finding the grave sites down in, when we was going to Midnight Whistler, that they do bury their own. And when Trapper went back down there and dug down into one of them grave sites, which, you know, we never go back by ourselves. And he broke, he broke his uh, code with the rest of us and went back down just to prove 
that you know they was they was actually graves that we found, and he did find he found hair and pieces of bones that was actually in the graves. Mid Midnight Whist Whistler Clan was probably the largest group of Bigfoot that we ever ran onto. That night that we all were calling when they started coming down over the hill and whistling at us and I caught them on the thermal. You ought to raise your thermal and see six or seven of those Bigfoots coming at you. You're going, oh shit, what did I do? And that's what they can say. You're not going to run because they, they can walk a lot faster than I can. And yeah, you're surrounded. But that was a that was a big moment for us. That's why Crapper went back. You're only as fast in the woods as you're slow as talking. There's no need to try to get any hurry. So you got to take care of the people that, you know, like me. I got to make sure everybody, I'm always in the back. I got to make sure everybody's ahead of me, keep everybody ahead of me. Try to keep whatever's behind us back. Sometimes it gets pretty hectic. He got hectic today when I tripped and fell over there, didn't he? You're happy. Huckleberry had my back, if anybody seen that. I definitely, I tumbled my butt down. I've been having trouble lately after I fell on the last show. But Huckleberry and them guys gathered me up and uh, put a smile on my face because that's what I remember. These guys are for each other and we're all for one. Hell yeah! Well, I was getting ready to do nice and out on the job. Yes, I got up then, didn't I? Yeah, you need to look quick. <laughs> All right, the next one. The next one's going to be quick, but we got one more. I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. I had, me and my brother had an encounter up in, on our farm. You know, I've been after him since I was 15 years old. When I first started, I couldn't find books, so I had to go to my elders and talk to them and take a little bit of it and throw it away and keep some of it. So then, and these legends, there's truth to all these legends. It's just figuring out what is the truth. And you go with the Native Americans, you know, why would they have any need to lie to it? And the Native Americans spoke of the Bigfoot as a large ape-like creature. And so we know back for 100 to 200 years ago that these creatures did exist. And what got me started when I was nine years old with this big large cat, and uh, we know it was the wampus beast. Uh, once I encountered something that was uh, only talked to from my older, my grandpa and them spoke of it. And back then, you know, they didn't talk much about the things that you know, nobody seen. They always said, you know, keep hush about it. People will make fun of you if you speak out. So you have to watch, you know, what you say. And so from that on, uh, I, I was uh, intrigued by it and, and I was a non-stop. I've always been a hunter and a trapper, a fisherman. I lived in the woods, still live in the woods today. I live in a beautiful place called Sugar Valley. There's two to three thousand acres down into the valley that me and my family own and friends. And uh, I'm limited to uh, hunting and fishing. And the neighbors are miles apart. So once you live in a place that you know unstomp and get down into the woods, and, and that's all I ever knew. And when the trapper started this up and started talking about the day he was going to retire that you know, he wanted to get into this. This is something that's been you know, on his mind all his life. This is from the 70s when he talked about it. And as soon as he spoke of it and talked to me, I was interested immediately wanting to be able to join in with him. I deer hunted with him. I fished with him. And when he started talking about chasing these crypty creatures and these big foots and monsters and things that you know, nobody knows of, I was, I was all in. There's no stopping me. Even if the TV people always back out, this guy right here for sure will always be out there in the woods looking. Shoot two of it. Yeah, you don't need cameras to hunt big, but actually probably be got her off his album, wouldn't you? <laughs> All righty then. All right. We want to thank you and every one of you for coming out here today. We greatly appreciate it. We've all been a great bunch of people here. We've had a great time and we hope to come back. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you and God bless you.